We're now going to move to the case of projectile motion. Projectile motion is just a special 2D case of uniform acceleration problems using the kinematic equations. So you've got some sort of ball here, let's say, and that ball is projected with some initial velocity v naught at some angle. And generally, we treat these problems so that there's no air resistance and therefore there's no acceleration, for instance, due to a headwind or something else. Occasionally they'll give you some acceleration in the X, but that's not the general way. Generally it's just meant to be a problem where we neglect air resistance. And this ball will follow a parabolic path. And at each point along this path, no matter where you're at, let me change my color here, uh, this point right here, this point right there, any point along there, the acceleration is downward and is constant and its value is 9.8 meters per second squared. So at every point the acceleration vector points downward along that curve. <clears throat> so that's the first thing to note. You know AX and you know AY in the problem. And you know that you can use the kinematic equations to work the problem. Now <clears throat> if you work through the free fall problem then you realize that the real trick to this is that you're going to basically be doing two one-dimensional problems, one of which is a free-fall problem along the Y if you do it as I do. I generally prefer to make this be my Y-axis, this be my X-axis. I always make my Y-axis point up so my acceleration always points down in minus 9.8 meters per second squared and that's A sub Y. You don't have to do that. That's your choice. You're the master of your universe with your axis, but your accelerations have to match up with the axis that you chose. So, key idea. Projectile motion can be broken down into two one-dimensional motion problems connected by a common time. So they're two totally independent problems except that the T in each of them is the same. The vertical motion is a free fall problem. So based on the axis I chose, I know that AY is minus G. And the horizontal motion is a constant speed problem. So A sub X is 0 meters per second squared. And that means right off the bat I can write a set of equations using the kinematic equations and take into account those two facts. So in the X direction I have X equal X naught plus V X naught T plus one-half AXT squared, but that term is zero. And VX, oops, is VX naught plus AXT, but again that term is zero. So that says the final speed along the X direction is equal to the initial X component of the velocity. That is, along the X nothing changes. It moves in constant speed in the X direction. And likewise, Vx squared is Vx naught squared plus 2Ax x minus x naught. But again, this term is zero. So these two things say the same thing. They just say that Vx equals Vx naught. This equation, that equation, is special. That equation can be used to solve something. This is just that statement there. Now let's write the y part. y equal y naught plus v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. v y is v y naught plus a y t and Vy squared Vy naught squared plus 2 Ay y minus y naught. So what do we have? We have our normal three equations for free fall 
plus one more equation, sometimes known as the Ray equation, that tells you how far along x it goes if you know the time. Usually what's done is this equation is needed to solve for t in the problem. And then that t can be plugged in here to solve for other things. But four equations, that means there's a maximum thing you can be asked to find is four different types of problems. That is four unknowns. All right. Now, some other important facts to note about these guys. Only the vertical component of the projectile's velocity is zero at the object's maximum height. So objects going along like this. At this point here, it can and often does, well, the projectile motion has a velocity component. Oops, I should say that's velocity. That's VX naught I hat. Its X component never changes. Its Y component, the upper component, that's zero, but not its X component. Another important fact. In working these problems, you're often, like I said, given that the cannonball is shot with some velocity V naught, let's say 75 meters per second maybe, and it's shot in at some angle theta. We do not have formulas with V naught and theta in them. We have formulas with Vx and Vy in it. We will have to break this vector into Vx naught, its x component at t equals zero, and Vy naught. And if you had this particular particular triangle, then I would know that Vx naught is V naught cosine theta because that's the adjacent side to that angle. And Vy naught would be V naught sine theta because that's the opposite side of the triangle. This is where trig gets into the play. All right, so always, always, always break the initial velocity into its components. You have no equations for handling these in terms of V naught and theta. I'll come back and talk about some of the difficulties you have in solving equations that, for instance, have theta and V naught in it if you're not told the initial speed and you're not told the initial angle and that's what they want you to work. That's the hardest. Those are so-called transcendental math equations. Last, and I'll prove this later on, the trajectory of a projectile <coughs> is a parabola. So this ball is going to follow a parabolic path. This is known from the time of Galileo Galilei and even before. At each point along the path the velocity vector is tangent to the path and this side here is the same. The x part never changes. What changes is the y part. Here it's got some y. It's going up. Here it's not going up anymore. Over here, again, tangent to the path. That part is the same. It's vx naught. Derivatives, which is what velocity is to a position time graph, is always going to leave you tangents to the path. All right. <clears throat> And like I said just a minute ago, the horizontal velocity component at any time is whatever its initial horizontal component was. We get those out of the kinematic equations. All right. In the next video, I will sit down and try to actually work a small problem involving a golfer hitting a golf ball 